Ayan, good uh, uh, good afternoon international comrades to our kasamas, to our friends and uh, sa lahat ng manonood natin ngayon dito sa National Democratic Line Online School. Uh, welcome po sa inyong lahat. Today is a really special episode that the ND Line have prepared. Again, um on our uh, on our Facebook page we said the revolution is not a dinner party. It's not a dinner table. It's not a peace. It's not a it's not a It's not a movement that is full of elegant things. No, it has it has faced many adversities. It had faced um, many contradictions, including its errors. But what it's uh, what makes our political line correct is how the movement faced these errors and conduct a great rectification movement in order to genuinely serve the people. So to to give uh, further more studies about this today, we will tackle the. On the Philippines Continuing Revolution on the Second Great Rectification Movement. Again, to our manonoods, please don't forget to like, share, and invite pa more kasamas to watch this webinar uh, para mas masayang matuto, diba? Mas, mara- mas marami, mas masaya. No? So, uh, let's start the topic. But before first, let's uh, let us welcome our um, speaker, no? Our speaker on this ND Line Online, uh, Tito. Uh, International League of People Stru- uh, Struggle. Chief Emeritus, Tito Joma Season. Hi, Tito. Kamusta po? Mapagpalayang hapon sa inyo. Nakamute po. Sorry. Nakamute po. Sorry. Uh, welcome mo rin ating uh, tagapakinig. Uh, warmest greetings of solidarity sa kanila. Ayan. Sige, Tito. Let's start na, no? Our... our... discussion or our webinar for today. Uh, let's tackle the first question dito. Sabe, it is often said, sorry, uh, ayan, sorry po. Ayan, sabe dito, tito, it is often said that organizational or institutional development becomes unwieldy as the forces and structures of the organization or the institution grow and expand no so tito could you please give us a general brief and concise but sufficient appraisal of the structural and institutional problems that the confronted that that the party confronted particularly at the time of the philippine history that triggered a second great rectification a second great rectification movement nakabulol po yun <laughs> say tito as dialectical materialism teaches us It is true that organizational or institutional development and the growth and expansion of the forces and structures of an organization or institution bring up new problems, and including uh, certain blatant errors that must be solved in order to further advance and reach a new and higher level of development. Since its re-establishment in 1968, The Communist Party of the Philippines has declared that it is responsible for centralized ideological and political leadership while it relies on a democratic mass space and decentralized operations. There is a whole ground for victories and failures or errors, even as the general trend is victorious. The Communist Party of the Philippines is the advanced detachment of the working class as a uh, the leading force of the Philippine Revolution. It is responsible for ideological leadership with Marxist-Leninism, Maoism as the theoretical guide to action. It is responsible for political leadership and for setting forth and realizing the general political line of people's democratic revolution through protracted people's war. It follows the organizational principle of democratic centralism and directs the revolutionary mass organizations and the organs of political power to do likewise. When the second great rectification movement was launched in 1992, certain ideological, political, and organizational errors had already been running in the previous 12 years. The main ideological error was the subjectivist notion of a few members of the CPP Central Committee that the economy had ceased to be semi-feudal and had become industrial capitalist. The consequent main political error was the left opportunist error of urban insurrectionism, which afflicted one region after another. 
The secondary political error was right opportunism, which called for taking out the working class leadership from the United Front, supposedly to attract more people and have closer alliance with the anti-Marcos reactionaries. The main organizational error was ultra-democracy involving factionalism of uh, the left, uh, in quotes, and the right opportunist groups. Uh, let me uh, uh, state in, the, in general terms that uh, in the course of development, uh, Marxism, uh, Leninism, Maoism teaches us that the law of contradiction keeps on operating. To be able to advance from one uh, stage of development uh, uh, you, we need to solve problems, and by solving the problems, we advance. But uh, upon the, uh, coming to the new stage uh, of development, new problems would arise. And so these problems had to be solved. Otherwise, there would be retrogression. But if you solve these problems, such as those problems and errors, uh, committed uh, and um, in, uh, in the 1980s and uh, uh, criticized and um, and rectified by the second great uh, uh, rectification movement, then uh, uh, the, a new advance is made. Sorry. Um, uh, uh, let me repeat the question, po. Sabi dito, tito, what were considered the major blunders in the previous work in the party that needed to be rectified? And how far had this affected the organizational health of the party organization in terms of matters ideological, political, and organizational? Tito, sorry. Tito. I am sorry, I think I was... Even as the major errors occurred at the central level and from one region to another at different times, the Marxist-Leninist, Maoist ideological, political and organizational foundation and core of leadership remained intact and strong and were able to resist, criticize and rectify the errors. There were some prompt or timely objections to and criticisms of the errors. As early as 1982, I wrote, on, uh, even if I, were in, I was in prison, um, I was able to write on the mode of production in order to debunk the claim that the Philippine economy was no longer semi-feudal, but industrial capitalist. Uh, uh, this was actually a Trotskyite uh, notion, no? Uh, which was trying to justify uh, uh, insurrection, urban insurrectionism. And it it uh, was giving credit to Marcos for making the Philippines supposedly industrial capitalist through its so-called 11 industrial projects. Um, one, um, one result of uh, this uh, subjectivist notion was right opportunism, uh, reformism, and uh, liquidationism. Um, uh, which meant uh, that uh, in the so-called new Katipunan draft program for the National Democratic Front uh, uh, that was put forward sometime in 1982 uh, and then 1983. Um, so uh, the idea uh, was uh, uh, to uh, lay, uh, to give more emphasis to work in the cities rather than in the countryside, and uh, uh, to work for reforms, and um, um, uh, to keep out the working class as a leading uh, a leading force in the United Front. So this, and then um, uh, this uh, emphasis on uh, work in the urban areas was supposed to prepare uh, for urban insurrection. Uh, left opportunist errors of urban insurrectionism occurred in one region after another 
And during and after the frustrations of this wrong line, uh, so-called uh, anti-DPA campaigns were carried out in violation of due process in the period of 1985 to 1992. The worst of the urban insurrectionism and anti-DPA campaign occurred in certain regions, uh, like uh, Southern Tagalog, Manila Rizal, Negros, or Central Visayas, and Mindanao. Revisionism and Gorbachevism surfaced in 1988 onward and was promoted in the uh, Angbayan in 1990 and 1991. But the same elements that began uh, this uh, uh, subjectivist error from 1980 onward. The worst of bureaucratism was the use of higher authority in order to promote and carry out erroneous lines. Bureaucratism in most cases were usually the errors of well-meaning comrades who tended to discourage even positive and healthy initiatives just because they had not been explicitly approved first by the so-called political officer uh, in charge of an entire organization or by a collective meeting. Uh, so uh, 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 initiatives taken, even if uh, healthy and effective, would be discredited just because uh, the political uh, officer in the first place was not uh, paying attention to developments in this area of work. We can proceed to the next question. I see. Uh, uh, Tito, like the uh, th this opportunism have really brought um, uh, much taint, no, sa ating organizations. Uh, next question, Tito, that we have is how did left opportunism, oppor opportunism, no, opportunism percolate into the structure of the party, and what is your overall assessment of its impact in terms of attacks on principle, ideological, political, and moral loss? or loss in terms no of the lives of forces or lives of the members of our own of the own party and the community it serves a communist party that is engaged in protracted people's war is likely to produce some left opportunist elements who propose quicker but baseless or premature ways of seizing political power like organizing bigger but unsustainable fighting units overemphasizing military work at the expense of mass work, depreciating extensive and intensive guerrilla warfare, and pipe dreaming about urban insurrections and driving the head and body of the armed revolutionary movement against the still solid wall of the enemy. Such left opportunism can be generated by certain elements who dispense with the use of dialectical materialism in analyzing the balance of forces and how at a certain stage of the people's war, the enemy can be defeated part by part with the correct strategy and tactics. Of course, when left opportunist errors occur, grave losses of lives and means of the party, the people's army, the movement, and the people are incurred. Therefore, these left opportunist errors must be prevented before they occur and defeated and corrected whenever they occur. I see Tito. Pero um besides aside from this left opportunism, we, we also do have the right opportunism, no? How did the right oppor opportunist opportunism, Tito, likewise percolate into the party's organizational structure? What is your assessment po of its impact in terms of attack on principles, ideological, political, and or moral loss, as well as uh terms of loss of the lives uh, of forces, lives of the members of the party, and the community that it serves. The subjectivist notion that the Philippines had become industrial capitalist suggested it was wrong to have a strategic line of encircling the cities from the countryside, which is supposed to be neglecting the necessary concentration of work on the, in the cities. The right opportunities stressed legal work and building the legal united front. On the same ground of invalidating protracted people's war in the countryside, the left opportunists called for urban insurrectionism. By depreciating the armed struggle in the countryside, the right opportunists were practically discouraging, uh, discouraging it in contrast to the left opportunists who prejudiced the development of people's war by harping on the line of premature 
urban armed insurrections, and yet merely daydreaming about these. I agree with you, Tito. Ano, um, that's why we really need be need to we really need to be careful on our analysis that we that we that we have in in the organization in every organization that um, everyone has. No, we need to be careful on the analysis. Um, next question, Tito. We have no. It's kind. It's still relevant to the past two questions. How did opportunism and reformism, Gorbachevism, revisionism, bureaucratism, liquidism, and others? arise and fair. The errors of subjectivism, opportunism, and other related errors arose because these were put forward by unremolding petty bourgeois elements within the party and its leading organs. These elements set a mindset that was one-sided, shallow, and short-sighted, and inclined to imagine an easy victory without any basis in hard work and development of the necessary amount of strength to realize an objective. The errors of the subjectivist and opportunist were identified and defeated conclusively by the second great rectification movement. But major and minor errors can keep on arising because of the difficult objective conditions, wrong estimates, and the pressures of the enemy forces. Errors are corrected in the course of regular and timely sessions of analysis, criticism, and self-criticism and summing up. If these are not enough, then a rectification movement of longer duration and wider scale has to be undertaken. I agree with you, Tito. No, you see, ah, narinig nyo po yan, ma, uh, to our viewers, no, we need to conduct timely sessions of analysis, criticism, and self-criticism, and summing ups in order to, to have our organizations aligned. So next question naman, Tito, we have is, what were the considerable steps engaged to pursue rectification of these errors? The second great rectification was principally educational character. Mm -hmm. uh, the party uh, uh, made it a point not to engage in, uh, uh, in uh, 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 imposing punishments of those who were in error. In fact, those who committed the gravest errors uh, uh, took flight, no? uh, uh, moved out of the party. So uh, uh, that uh, helped to uh, prevent uh, another round of, uh, um, of uh, punishments on people. So the uh, second great ratification movement stayed uh, with its character as uh, educational. It involved comprehensively the correction of wrong ideas, wrong policies and wrong organizational formations and deployments. An overall critique of the errors was made, uh, uh, it was titled um, Reaffirm Basic Principles and Rectify Errors. Particular critiques were made according to fields of work and regions. Uh, study courses at the basic, intermediate and advanced levels were stepped up. Uh, the general line of people's democratic revolution through protracted people's war was stressed, and reorganizations had to be made in order to let the cadres lead the party members and the masses and uh, mass organizations and communities uh, in, or the guerrilla bases and zones, and to have a well proportioned and balanced deployment of the units of the people's army for mass work and tactical offensives and extensive and intensive guerrilla warfare. I see. Thank you, Tito. Uh, that's a really sharp answer. Let's proceed, Tito, to the, um, to the next question po. Would you distinguish the second rectification movement as entirely different and separate episode from the issues and problems of the party during the first rectification movement? Why po, Tito? And why would you consider this a setback from where the party wants to, to progress? Why or why not, Pope? I must uh, point out first that uh, the first and the second great rectification movements had a similar basis uh, uh, in terms of summing up, uh, analyzing, criticizing errors, and rectifying those errors. But the big difference indeed was in that uh, uh, they, they covered uh, different periods in the development of the Communist Party of the Philippines. 
The first great rectification movement was entirely different because it covered a long period of decades, mainly from 1942 to the years immediately preceding the re-establishment of the CPP. The main content was about the errors of the series of Lava leaders whose consequences and influence continued to obstruct the advance of the Philippine Revolution in the 1960s. The second great rectification movement was the identification and correction of major errors committed by certain cadres and organs of the re-established party. If the errors were not corrected, they would have led to the disintegration and destruction of the CPP and the Philippine Revolution. The correction of errors was part of strengthening uh, of the party and revolution. Indeed, as a result of the, re, uh, of the rectification movement, uh, the CPP and uh, the entire revolutionary movement became stronger uh, nationwide and became more deeply rooted among the toiling masses of workers and peasants. Let me point out how serious was the situation in the period of 1988 to 1992. By 1992, it was clear that the CPP had lost 60% of the mass base. So uh, the rectification movement had to be launched. I see. Thank you, uh, thank you, Tito, for clarifying that to us. No, it's a... Uh, um... Th that is a really great way of separating uh first and the second rectification movement no uh next question naman tito that we have is what principles were further validate validated and strengthened no on the process of the second rectification movement the fundamental principles of marxism leninism maoism the political program of the people's democratic revolution through protracted people's war and the principle of democratic centralism were validated and strengthened uh, by the second great rectification movement. The CPP leads the revolution and wield the weapons of revolutionary armed struggle and the National United Front. And the armed struggle is integrated with agrarian revolution and mass-based building, meaning to say building mass organizations and the organs of political power. The basic completion of the people's democratic uh, uh, revolution through seizure of political power leads to the start of the socialist revolution. I see. Uh, ayun. Thank you so much, Tito, for that. Um, now, Tito, proceeding, no? after decades of starting the Second Great Rectification Movement, let me ask, po, what were the programs initiated and, and now are in place as a response to the diagnosed errors? And how far has the party organization has gone so far to achieve this rectification? How would this ensure that the same errors will not be repeated? Po? And do you see this as workable and effective measures? The Second Great Rectification Movement successfully ran its full course from 1992 to 1998. It defeated the subjectivist line, the various versions of left opportunism and urban insurrectionism, and the right opportunism within the NDMP. Uh, those mislaid by the various factionalists returned to the revolutionary ranks. The legal democratic mass movement was able to overthrow the standard regime in 2001. Where rectification had been done even before the uh, second great rectification movement was launched in 1992, they recovered even faster as in Southern Luzon, the Visayas, and Mindanao, where urban insurrectionism, opportunism, and Campania was caused the most damage uh, in Mindanao. The SGRM, the Second Great Rectification Movement, was so successfully done that the CPP and the revolutionary movement there in Mindanao recovered strength fast and became the strongest in the whole country before and beyond the end of the 20th century. There is no absolute guarantee that errors committed cannot be committed again after correction, but experience and gains uh, from corrections also accumulate to prevent or correct the same errors once more. The ability to correct any kind of error also rises through successful rectification movements as well as through timely sessions of criticism and self-criticism that apply lessons learned from rectification movements.
I agree with you, Tito. No, uh, I think tama po yun, no? that there is no absolute guarantee that errors that have committed in the past can repeat. No, what we can do now is to conduct. Ayun nga sabi niya po is timely sessions of criticism and self criticism. Take note po sa ating mga organizations sa ano no, nakapag CSC na ba kayo? Ayan. So, pero I mean, let's let's move further sa ating questions to 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 have this discussion steadfast. Tito, what is your assessment po on the current strength of the party organization as a result of the second rectification movement? And what are the party's hope for the future, most especially given the current state of affairs in the country? The second great rectification movement greatly strengthened the CPP ideologically, politically, and organizationally. And the revolutionary movement made great strides nationwide in terms of building the CPP the armed struggle, and the United Front. But the Second National Congress noted in 2016 that the error of conservatism has caused stagnation in certain regions. Uh, this conservatism overstressed mass work at the expense of the needed frequency in launching tactical offensives in order to increase the armed and political power of the revolutionary movement. Uh, thus, a, uh, a rectification movement is being carried out in order to criticize, repudiate, and rectify conservatism and uh, make a correct balance of mass work and military offensives. Since his coming to power in 2016, the Duterte ruling clique has engaged in all-out war against the revolutionary movement, has terminated the GRP and the LP peace negotiations and has unleashed a campaign of state terrorism against the revolutionary forces and all patriotic and democratic forces of the people. It is hell-bent on destroying the revolutionary movement of the people to serve U.S. imperialism and the reactionary classes of big compradors, landlords, and bureaucrat capitalists. At the same time, it is collaborating with Chinese imperialism and Chinese criminal syndicates for the purpose of self-enrichment at the expense of national sovereignty and territorial integrity. The traitorous, tyrannical, mass murdering, plundering, and swindling Duterte regime is detested by the broad masses of the Filipino people. The rise of this despotic regime, similar to that of the Marcos fascist dictatorship, is a manifestation of the worsening crisis and rottenness of the semi-colonial and semi-feudal ruling system. It is also connected to the worsening crisis of uh, uh, the world capitalist system, uh, especially since the financial crisis of 2008. Of course, you must also take into account the aggravation due to the COVID-19 pandemic. No? The escalating conditions of oppression and exploitation are driving more and more people to fight more resolutely and militantly than ever for their national and social liberation. I see. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Tito, for um for answering our questions dito sa ating discussion on the Philippines continuing revolution, the second great rectification movement. With that being said, po to our audiences who are currently watching and um you know, uh, our floor is now open for our question and answer portion. So you can now drop your questions. If you do have question in mind about our topic today, please drop it on the comment section. So Tito Joe, we could send it to Tito Joe and have him answer it live. So, but while we are waiting for it to be sent out, no, habang nagtatype kayo sa aming comment section, I uh, we will proceed on a quick break. So again, we will be right back. Well, we are waiting for your uh, question for your questions no, to be sent. So, uh, magbabalik po ang um, magbabalik po ang um, Line online on the Philippines continuing revolution, the second great rectification movement.
aming kasalanan. Pagnasaan ang lupang tiwangwang o pangkahit minsan makaani ng walang naalalang partihan. Magkiit ng ayuda mula sa gobyerno sa panahon ng tagkuyot at kasalatan. Ano ang aming kasalanan? Hinihing na mamuhi at magmura sa inyong nagpapahirap sa amin. Pagkabala sa mga samahan sa mga talakayang lumalalim na sa gabi at lampas sa araw ito para mag-amot ng ipinagbabawal ninyong kaalaman. Bigyan ng hugis at larawan sa mga salitang ipininta sa pader at malatengka ang tunog ng alam ng tiyan. Ano ang aming kasalanan? My soldiers to shoot you. I will not hesitate to order the police to arrest and detain you. Bahala kayo sa pagkain niyo. Ano ang amin kasalanan? Shoot them dead. Umusal ng babala at pantak. Sumalungat sa mga salita ng otoridad. Pag-iwan ng sangkaterbang polyeto sa kalsada. Pagkatapos ng mga protesta at huwelga. Pagkaibigan sa iba pang api, sa mga tinatatakan ninyong terorista upang makadamang may karami kami sa pagkakasal. Magtamba ng bisig at maghabis ng kamao sa hangin. Magkaroon ng mga anak na nag-aarmas para tubusin kami sa aming mga kasalanan. Ano ang aming kasalanan? There's something for everyone this barbecue season at Asda.
Oh, again, welcome back sa ating um, discussion on the Philippines Continuing Revolution, the Second Great Rectification Movement. So, again, uh, a while ago, Tito Jo discussed um, or further explained to us what happened or what is the state Second Great Rectification Movement, no? And it's relevant to the party organization. So now, again, we are opening our floors. Our floor is still open for the Q&As. So if you have questions in mind, please do send it on the comment box so uh, Tito Jo can answer it, no? So, uh, Tito, mer uh, meron na po pala tayong mga ilang uh, questions na, sine na sinend ng ating mga audiences, ano? Let me ask you this first question sent by your audience. Sabi dito, Tito, you mentioned that organizational or institutional development and expansion bring up new problems, no? Why is that? Bakit, po, bakit daw po? Shouldn't be supposed to resolve the problems and improve the organization? How do you resolve such problems in order to avoid blatant errors? Well, I am pointing out that uh, the law of contradiction will always be operating. That means saying there will always be problems arising. The, the contradiction that we are most concerned about in a uh, waiting revolution is the class struggle. Mm -hmm. There will always be ups and downs, twists and turns, but if you solve the problems that arise at every stage, uh, you uh, can advance. And even uh, in reaching a new 
stage of development, you will still have to, to face problems. Uh, there are problems that arise because you are small and weak. And there are also problems that arise when you are bigger and stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, but the point is, if you don't solve the problems you are confronted with at a given time, um, you don't advance. Uh, and the worst case is that you get destroyed. No? Mm -hmm. But if you solve uh, the problems that arise at a given stage, you are in a stronger position to uh, face new problems uh, or all recurring, um, uh, recurring old problems can be more easily solved. Uh, if, uh, if these old problems have been um, uh, uh, corrected, no? And in uh, making the rectification uh, movement, if uh, the problems are serious enough, uh, they have lingered for some time and they affect um, uh, many parts of the organization. Um, so uh, there is a sustained effort uh, to, uh, uh, to look into the ideological, political, and organizational roots of the problems to be solved. And then there is timely uh, correction of errors through criticism and self-criticism in the course of work. No? Um, leadership in the revolutionary movement by the party means problem solving. If, uh, um, if one thinks that uh, um, the leadership can sit back and watch uh, uh, the chickens grow and keep on laying eggs and, uh, you know, uh, uh, making poultry one after another, then uh, you're not in the revolution. The enemy is actively trying to destroy you. And the objective, uh, there are tremendous odds from the objective conditions, even when the enemy is not around to hit you. So, uh, and there are problems that arise because of your, um, of the um, um, uh, bigness, you know, the greatness of the tasks you want to achieve, and your limited capacities. And there are objective conditions which pose tremendous odds. And there is the enemy, eh? there is the mm -hmm. class enemy always trying to, eh, to pressure you and force you to commit mistakes and uh, 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 the enemy is always trying to destroy you. So mm -hmm. uh, problems will always arise. And but the moment you, uh, you keep, uh, but uh, as you solve these problems, you become stronger, you, um, uh, you face up to bigger problems. And sometimes it's ironical that a good thing at a, at a certain time that solves a problem can be a bad thing if you overdo it. No? So in 1992, the problem was uh, ultra leftism, no? uh, military adventurism in the form of urban, um, urban insurrectionism to the neglect of mass work. No? Huh? So mass work was uh, demanded by the second great rectification movement. Mm -hmm. But uh, later on, um, after the uh, uh, resounding success of the second great rectification movement, a new problem would arise. Eh? Because some cadres uh, would sit back uh, uh, and then uh, uh, after doing uh, well in mass work, they say, or, or they use mass work as an excuse you know, to avoid uh, uh, launching tactical offensives. You know, you, the revolution will never advance eh, if you don't launch tactical offensives. And if you avoid them by invoking mass work or avoiding disturbance of your mass base, then you are not in the, eh, you are not in the business of making revolution. So, you know, a good thing can become a bad thing if not handled well. So there, is, there has to be a correct balance between mass work and launching tactical offensives. Um, to overemphasize one at the expense of the other would uh, um, would would, would uh, beat you, no? They would defeat you in the process. So, um, to be in the revolutionary movement, you must always be able. You must always keep in mind about uh, the, uh, facing up to problems that arise and solving them. Uh, that is life, even in ordinary life. Uh, uh, Revolution is not like organizing a picnic or a dinner party, no? Yes. Uh, but even in organizing a dinner party, eh? uh, 
Uh, or in technique, there are, you know, things uh, of a smaller kind that you need to solve. If you overlook those problems, if you forget to bring the food to the picnic, eh, uh, your, your uh, picnickers will starve. You know? I want to go for the... And it is to simplify, or simplify. Uh, but there are other problems. Uh, uh, to make a picnic, uh, uh, you said you fail to send out the invitations. Eh? Uh, some organizers um, do, do make that uh, failure. No? Uh, they think they have already uh, sent enough notices, but they haven't really given notices to everyone uh, who could possibly attend the picnic. I so I, I, I hope, in principle, I've already um, I have already explained that um, um, uh, waging revolution involves solving problems, meeting. And being confronted with problems all the way, but solving those problems uh, uh, result in your advancement. And if you fail to solve those problems, um, you you, uh, you retrogress, you stagnate, or uh, you are even destroyed. That's right. Uh, Tito, I agree with you. No, that's a really sharp answer para sa ating uh, audience. No. Um, next question, naman, Tito, that we have. It's uh, from another audience. If the main form of struggle of CPP and the New People's Army is the armed struggle, then why is striving for swifter victory or seizing political power wrong? And why does focusing solely or heavily on the military aspect of revolution uh, is called erroneous? No? You know, the, the People's Army has to take time in trying to defeat the enemy mm -hmm. because the enemy is far superior in terms of military equipment, training and supplies uh, in so many aspects. And uh, the only way a people's army can beat uh, a big reactionary army is having a good mass base, having the support of the people, having the organizations and the organs of political power behind you. And then uh, as, uh, um, as uh, the people's army, the, uh, the caterers of the people's army and as well as the commanders, have to use dialectical materialism eh, in fighting the enemy. I explain in very concrete terms how you apply dialectical materialism and the simplest way to understand it, to understand the principle of divide one into two. Eh? So you are confronted with a battalion. Mm -hmm. You have only uh, a, a platoon or company, poor you. Eh? If you make that uh, platoon or uh, um, uh, or company uh, confront the, the battalion of the enemy, you're finished. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, you, you are finished in a short while. No? So what do you do? You analyze your enemy, the battalion. The battalion is not a indivisible one entity so big and so awesome and so impossible to hit. No? You analyze its parts. You know it has its command post, it, is, it has perimeter post, it has patrols, and so on and so forth. No? Oh, okay. So you don't bring your platoon, uh, if you are insurrectionist minded, uh, you bring your platoon or company uh, and confront directly the, uh, the battalion of the enemy, you are finished from, right from the start. Uh, uh, but what do you do after analyzing the dis deployment of your enemy battalion, you can hit it piece by piece. Eh? And your platoon, eh? your company uh, can divide into several platoons, or your platoon, if that's the only thing you have, can hit the patrol, eh? the, 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 the squad patrols. You can make a surprise attack on the peripheral post of your enemy. Eh? Uh, you get the point? That is what is meant by dividing one into two. You don't understand how a car works eh? unless you, you know, you bring up the hood and uh, uh, look no into the it, different yes, parts no. of the machine. Eh? Mm -hmm. Then you can analyze how to uh, uh, correct the malfunction or how you can destroy the car. <laughs> so uh, that's how the electrical materialism works uh, in confronting the enemy. So left opportunism. Uh, is uh, colliding your head, no? your platoon head uh, against the wall uh, of a battalion. No? So, let's talk in concrete terms. It is not true eh, that the NPA 25,000 uh, 
uh, fighters with uh, uh, with high power rifles in in the 1980s, huh? mm -hmm. and that's not true. The actual strength of the uh, NPA as of the plenum of 1985 was only 5,600. And in 1986, uh, it was uh, only um, um, uh, 6,100. It's not true, 25,000. So, uh, and, uh, there are uh, stupid people who say, uh, like this Nathan Kempo, uh, like uh, saying that, Oh, the NPA could have gotten power in Manila, or a great big share of the power, if only the NPA uh, had uh, huh, had not uh, over-concentrated in the countryside, and if the NPA had brought uh, all its forces to Manila. That is stupid. That, that would have been wiped out, and that would have disturbed the legal process of overthrowing Marcos. And um, yeah, there were, in fact, only 100 elements of the NPA, eh? uh, but what could they do? Uh, the more effective, uh, the more effective thing that the uh, ousted Marcos was the uh, uh, big masses of people rising uh, at Elsa and around Malacanang Palace, and uh, uh, the turnaround of uh, of. Uh, 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 Ramos and Enrile against Marcos, you know, split in the armed forces, of course. So, uh, you have to understand all these things. Um, you cannot expect anything from the NPA beyond its actual strength. No? Um, so, uh, the problem with, uh, with uh, the forces of the NPA in 1986 was that, well, it has done the errors were already um, delaying progress of the movement. Uh, from 1981 to 1983, it looked that uh, having companies was good. No? Uh, we you use Mindanao as an example. Uh, indeed, if you had five companies, uh, they would work more effectively in destroying enemy units. Um, uh, in the use of guerrilla warfare, bigger units as guerrilla force would be more effective than squads and platoons. But then, when uh, the NPA companies went beyond five, moving towards 15 or 16, big problems of sustaining the companies because the companies were being built eh, by putting together the squads and platoons and leaving no, uh, leaving no squads or platoons uh, at the on a horizontal scale, uh, maintaining close relations with the masses, and uh, so um, the loss of mass base did not uh, work against uh, against uh, waging effective uh, uh, tactical offensive. If you don't have them a good mass base, uh, it would be your isolated company that is uh, easily uh, seen by the mm -hmm. enemy informers and reported to the bigger enemy units. Uh, you get the point? When you have a good mass base, you can conceal your force from the enemy more effectively. But if you concentrated on building vertically uh, larger units, even if only so many companies, uh, you can get hit easily and you become ineffective when you don't get uh, um, enough um, mass support and timely information uh, from the masses. So there are problems uh, if, uh, if you make a premature larger formations that are not well based on uh, uh, the relative dispersal. You know, in the, in the People's War, you have to have a relative concentration of force relative to your relative dispersion of units. Eh? Um, so your relatively concentrated force is uh, your rallying point and uh, it is the one that uh, uh, takes the initiative in making attacks against the enemy. But you need, eh? you need the relatively dispersed forces to be close to the masses and uh, uh, to be able to be better informed about the movements of your enemy. Uh, but if you, if you over-concentrate your, uh, uh, your strength vertically and you get alienated from your own people, uh, that's your end. Uh, you, you will just play Korean pusui huh? from, uh, 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 from the time you wake up 
uh, to the time you clean your weapons and no, 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 you don't get any information when and when uh, the enemy eh, was uh, was last position. Are you get the point? Uh, those who, uh, uh, as, um, when so many companies were formed, they were unsustainable and um, they became ineffective in hitting the enemy. And um, they kept, as they were concentrated, they had nothing to do. And so they played Korean posui uh, most of the day. Huh? And from starting from uh, uh, 5 or 6 p.m., that's the only time they, they take their weapons to clean them. But they were not effective. So they proved to be ineffective. Uh, by 1985, when the, there were already, um, there were the companies were being isolated, and there were incidents of uh, NPA units being ambushed. Instead of the one, instead of being the ones ambushing, they were the ones uh, uh, being ambushed. Oh, there must be DPAs, huh? deep penetration agents. So there was uh, hysteria against so-called deep penetration agents, and then Kampanyang Ahos was undertaken. Um, and that was undertaken sometime in 1985, uh, uh, up to the time it was corrected. Um, by the way, uh, the errors in Mindanao were already noticed in 1988, uh, like in so many other places. And corrections were made. Um, the most uh, effective corrections uh, in the quickest way was made in Southern Tagalog because there was guidelines. There were guidelines issued about the correct principles and methods of investigation, trial, and uh, uh, punishment of uh, alleged uh, uh, deep penetration agents. So uh, that served to uh, stop the hysteria. And then by 1988, the uh, uh, CPP Central Committee already noticed a 40% decline in the mass base. And in, by 1991 and 1992, 60% was already lost. So if you keep on losing the mass base by uh, over-concentrating on your, uh, you know, uh, making, your, um, um, making your small units bigger without proper attention to mass base building, you're finished you, uh, unless you make the corrections. It took some years, uh, uh, you know, uh, you must distinguish the years, you know. There are the years that the errors were uh, uh, as something disastrous uh, was already appearing. Uh, uh, we, you can divide uh, the years uh, of 1980 uh, to 1992. 1980 to 1983 was circulation of the subjectivist and opportunist ideas. Then uh, um, the uh, application of the errors in line uh, started to show uh, from 1983 to 1986, but they were not entirely understood. No, but 1988 um, by 1988, in the worst cases, uh, that would be the only time in 1988 that there would be attempts. You know, the good cadres uh, took note that there were cadres who were good, but they were being misled by the bad ones. No? Um, you know, there were honest, uh, there were those who honestly made mistakes, and there were those who, who were hard-headed about uh, uh, the errors and insisted. You, saw, we saw, uh, you know, these are all comrades, no? and you know, it takes time eh, to put across the correct line against the wrong line being pushed by people who are in a position to impose the wrong line. So by 1988, the, the corrections were already made. So the, from 1988, there were, um, um, there were still areas where co the errors had to be corrected. But uh, 1992 uh, to 1988 uh, were needed. Was, there was a period needed for the rectification in order to review uh, everything from 1980. It doesn't mean that uh, the 
the Communist Party accumulated first the errors before rectification. There was rectification, criticism and self-criticism all the way. Eh? But then, in order to make a profound and comprehensive understanding of the problems, uh, uh, identifying the errors that must be solved so that they are not repeated. So, the second great rectification movement was, was launched as a result of a comprehensive, um, comprehensive summing up uh, document. There were two summing up documents. No? Uh, one was the rectify and reaffirm pr uh, basic principles and rectify errors. And uh, there was the chronology of events. Eh? Uh, and uh, that means to say, by 19, 1992, corrections were, had already been made, but to make sure uh, that the uh, corrections were well understood. Uh, but still, even after 92, there were those, uh, uh, there was, cr there were crises like Popo Lagman resisting eh? mm -hmm. up to, <laughs> for some time. Uh, from 1992 to 1993, uh, even up to 1994, he was able to mislead. Uh, uh, imagine, he was able to mislead uh, something like 85 percent of the cadres in Metro Manila. And it was only 1994 when those cadres came back to the party and understood the rectification movement. And also in elsewhere, um, uh, there were those... Um, uh, there were those who uh, uh, who were not removed and stayed on with the wrong ideas, and it took some time before they could be persuaded, and uh, they misled a number of people. So that is um, um, those were uh, phenomena um, pertaining uh, to the damage done to the party, the People's Army, and, and the various organizations. Uh, that is distinct from the. A decline of the mass base uh, that had occurred in uh, that was already observed in 1992, 60 percent, and efforts were already being made to recover to recover the mass base. Um, so um, that's it. The, the, there is extensive uh, rectification, even where uh, no errors occurred. People had to understand that errors had occurred in, uh, in other parts of the party, in other parts of the revolutionary movement, so they could learn from the mistakes of others. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, everyone has to learn lessons from anywhere so that uh, they can avoid uh, committing the same errors. That's the importance of rectification movement. It is sustained and for a certain period, and then you only, you don't make only criticism of the errors, you build up constructively and positively your ideological, uh, political, and, um, and um, uh, organizational strength. Eh? Oh. You don't just criticize errors and correct them, no. You, you engage in uh, the three levels of uh, formal study courses, uh, you uh, um, strengthen, uh, you, you improve your political work, build, uh, the, build, build further, more um, um, uh, units, more branches of the party, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, um, it's not just, you know, um, focusing on the errors, but uh, 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 building your strength uh, ideologically, politically, organizationally, by uh, building on your achievements, no? Because it was uh, some, some elements, uh, Opportunist, uh, the world created damage, it. made damage, but uh, most of the party members uh, 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 made achievements for the revolutionary movement. I see. All right, Tito, before we proceed to our uh, next question, we would just like to plug up, no? Um, articles are already being sold to our um, online bookshop. It is called flpress.store.nv, shown on the screen. So if you would like to avail books such as um, progressive books no, uh, written by Marx, Lenin, Mao, and other prog uh, progressive writers in the world, uh, you could visit their store para sa 
para maka-avail ng mga libro na pwede niyong basahin no? on your own pace. Uh, it's really cheap, $6, $12. Uh, and many, many selections. Aside from that, Anak Bayan is also selling um, our Serve the People shirt. No, So you could pre-order now. Just send your name, address, and uh, your details to us. It is pinned sa admin Facebook page. Just visit Anak Bayan Europa Facebook page. Ayan. Tito, to continue, no? Let's, um, can, can I ask you the next question na from our audience? No, I think it's kind of related to your answer previously. Sa, sa question na inas ng ating ng audience mula sa huling tanong. So, Tito, this one, clear, clearly, this panahon ng lihis gave birth to rejectionists and reaffirmists, no RJs or RAs. Who are they and how do they, for, they differ from one another? Hmm. Well, the RJs, so-called, and RAs derived their na name, by the way, how they reacted mm -hmm. to uh, reaffirm basic principles, the document reaffirm the basic principles and uh, rectify errors. So the reaffirms, the RAs uh, reaffirmed. And uh, on the negative side, the RJs rejected you know, uh, the uh, rectification uh, movement and in, in its documents. So that's how they, uh, uh, they uh, became, how they named themselves as they defined themselves in the way that they reacted to the rectification movement. And of course, the RJs are big losers in terms of propaganda. They're on yes. the negative side against a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what's so, what's, uh, you know, the RAs were winners just uh, by, you know, uh, by the uh, uh, identification uh, of uh, the opposing uh, sides. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, you are on the positive side. Reaffirm basic principles. So that's fine. Huh? Mm -hmm. And then you re reject. You are a rejectionist to what the, to the good thing that being reformed. Then you must be crazy. You don't even uh, so the uh, rejectionists were not only uh, um, were not only taking the wrong line ideologically, politically, organizationally, but they were disastrous uh, uh, propagandists against themselves. You know? By you know presenting themselves, uh, you know in the in the in the in the, in, uh, in uh, dividing. Uh, Okay. Ayan, um, to our audiences, um, welcome back ulit sa ating um, webinar. Unfortunately, we have faced a technical problem. Nawalan po kami ng kuryente. I'm really, really sorry po. Pero um, yes, again, we're back. Again, please, uh, we've lost some audiences. So please do share and invite pa more kasamas that, uh, and send them the links no? Um, so they could continue listening and studying about the Second Great Rectification Movement. So, um... Tito, uh, let's now proceed po dun sa ating uh, questions that we are um, that we are tackling a while ago po. Um, hold on, let's just look for it. Ayan. So, Tito, ang sabi dito, uh, yun, clearly, this panahon ng lihis gave birth to RJs and RAs. Who are they and how they do differ from one another now po? Ayan. Ay, uh, inulit, Diyo. Ha? Huh? Inulit question number two. Question, uh, should we proceed uh, po to the five na? Or uh, do you want to, to, to do some closing remarks sa questions on this question? Uh, if you want to do some closing remarks on question number four, you can proceed. Yep. Well, ang, uh, sagot, uh, ang sagot ko sa, uh, sa uh, dating tanong, um, how, um, how did the RJs and RAs uh, differ from one another? Uh, it was clear that uh, the, the RAs, the reaffirmists, were on the positive side. Um, and uh, they took their name from... Uh, uh, the title of the rectification document reaffirm basic principles mm -hmm. and um, uh, the bad propagandists that the RJs were and uh, took the negative side. In other words, they were rejecting those basic principles of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, that was a fine thing uh, that the RJs uh, exposed themselves uh, uh, 
uh, and exposed themselves to the Hispanic Post, to the efforts of the RAs to identify um, uh, the major errors uh, and correct them so that the revolutionary movement would advance. So uh, it is fine huh? uh, that the artists uh, knew uh, their, their own negativity against the, uh, against the positive uh, position of the RAs in reaffirming and carrying out basic principles. Mm -hmm. All right, Tita, thank you for that uh, um, answering that question. So uh, we may now proceed to sa ating next question. The next question, naman, Tita, that we have is how do the cadres ensure and live by the principles of the Second Great Rectification Movement? Cadres uh, ensure and uh, live by the principles by recognizing in the first place that those principles were drawn. Were were drawn from successful revolutionary movements that had solved problems before. And then uh, they also recognize that the second great rectification movement itself uh, was putting, correcting things, putting things right, no? as a result of the errors. And uh, so uh, those principles are not just abstractions, but they are living principles. And they are principles uh, that need to be carried forward in order to guide uh, further advance. So uh, in that way, uh, uh, they are moved by their own consciousness uh, to abide by those principles in the pursuing uh, the People's Democratic Revolution in the Philippines. Uh, the CPP learned a lot from the Cultural Revolution of China because the Cultural Revolution uh, sort of uh, put together all the major components of uh, Mao Zedong thought or Maoism. Uh, the, those components were the achievements of uh, Mao Zedong in theory and practice. And what were those uh, components? Uh, well, Mao contributed uh, to the advancement of, of Marxist-Leninist philosophy, uh, political economy, and um, uh, social science. Um, and then, uh, um, very much his own, uh, he developed rectification as a method of correcting errors within the party. And then protracted people's war is, is something that Mao developed. And the great cultural revolution itself as a, uh, as a um, principled method of combating revis modern revisionism, um, uh, preventing restoration of capitalism and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, consolidating socialism was a major, it was a major uh, uh, contribution of Mao and a major advancement of uh, uh, theory and practice, but you might, uh, someone might counterpose, but the Cultural Revolution failed, no? It, it uh, uh, because it was defeated no? by the Dengish Counter Revolution, and now China has become capitalist. But then, you know, uh, what is important, like the Paris Commune, which triumphed for only, uh, the, for only uh, some two months before it, before it was crushed, it was able to demonstrate certain things, so it was able to pose certain problems and was able to overcome those problems to some extent. But then there would also be uh, uh, insuperable problems like uh, the superiority of arms, of the, uh, of the combined strength uh, of the formerly warring parties of uh, uh, France and Germany, uh, uh, German bourgeoisie, no? Bismarck and, uh, and Thiers. So, um, but then, um, uh, while the Cultural Revolution was successful, especially in the first five years, uh, uh, Mao was able to prove that indeed 
in a uh, socialist society, uh, there can be a problem of the uh, recrudescence of uh, uh, the bourgeoisie. Eh? Uh, and then uh, through modern revisionism, it can push forward capitalist restoration. So um, this, um, you may not be able to point out now, uh, still standing uh, Chinese socialist society, eh? but uh, you can point eh, to the success of the Dengis counter-revolution as uh, proof, uh, proof uh, beyond doubt eh? that if you, um, if you let revisionism uh, uh, have its way, you are going to have capitalist restoration. That is a big contribution. Uh, and you would know how to bring back uh, socialism in a uh, society like China. So there are Maoists still in China, Maoist forces uh, that are uh, aiming to restore socialism. As in the Soviet Union, uh, there are uh, uh, proletarian revolutionaries that would like to bring back socialism against the proven uh, capitalist uh, um, restoration done by the revisionists. And um, uh, we used to make a distinction between the success of Stalin and uh, Mao. Huh? Uh, Stalin was successful in quelling, suppressing uh, the uh, right opportunities like Bukharin, eh? the original uh, uh, revisionist, uh, and uh, uh, the left opportunists like Trotsky. Eh? And um, because the uh, right and left opportunists, uh, opportunists uh, resorted to violence, you know, they, they, they killed Kirov, Kirov of Leningrad, an outstanding leader and follower of Stalin. So uh, Stalin uh, hit back. And then Mao would say, oh, uh, hit, uh, Stalin uh, made too much of administrative measures uh, 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 using the security forces to clamp down eh, on the opposition. That was the criticism of Mao. So uh, Mao was supposed to be uh, uh, gen more gentle in dealing with the opposition. Eh? Uh, imagine eh, two of the biggest capitalist rulers. Eh, meaning to say Liu Xiaoqi and Deng, Deng would be rehabilitated just because he said he was sorry. Uh, he made mistakes. And then he was sponsored by Zhou Enlai. And Deng Xiaoping was able to get back to power and uh, continue to betray the socialist this revolution. revolution. So, so there is also a, a possible error from, from uh, what, what appeared, appeared to be a better, better thing. thing huh? Huh? Mao was supposed, supposed to be the, the more gentle, gentle guy, guy. And, and Stalin was the more, more uh, 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 steely or, or more rough guy. guy. But I, I would say, say eh? you yeah. know, uh, if, if I, I were, were to handle the problem of Dengism, of Deng, if he says he's sorry, uh, uh, I would say, uh, if you are sorry, the mistakes were so grave, uh, you, you were already old, old like, like me, uh, you, you retire, retire. You, you get, get your, your pension, pension. But, but I don't bring him back to power and be in a position to betray again, again uh, the socialist, socialist revolution. revolution. That, that is the mistake of Mao. Even Mao commits mistakes. Uh, but the bigger mistake was, you know, the centrist to sponsor the return of uh, the rightist that should be to power. Because it was Zhou Enlai who told the... Uh, you who told uh, Mao that it would be a good thing to bring back Deng Xiaoping to power in order to stabilize uh, the situation. So, um, okay, you, uh, even the greatest scope of communist think uh, thinkers and revolutionaries uh, do not make perfect scores all the time. Yes. Tito, um, yes, I think that's kind of uh, connected na as well to our next question from our audience. Ang sabi niya, Tito, um, how does the CPP handle treat those cadres or former cadres who wants to return to the party or the movement? Are they welcome, Puba? Well, well um, if, um, you, you know, uh, there are cadres who commit mistakes. mistakes. You, you have, have to evaluate, evaluate, um, um, you have have to evaluate, evaluate how serious are the mistakes. And you, you have, have to um, evaluate whether the mistakes are committed, are committed yeah? honestly or maliciously. Or after committing errors, uh, 
and they are concealed maliciously. Eh? So you have to consider all these things. Um, you see, uh, uh, the greatest communist is not immune to committing error. Eh? Uh, you, one may consider himself the greatest, no? but uh, a, 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 a greatest communist can vacillate whether to go to the bathroom right away or not, no? or whether to take a bath or not, or, uh, you know, then, <laughs> you, know there are, there you can make little mistakes, eh? uh, and you can also make bigger mistakes. But the important thing, great uh, haters, um, or the good haters at the least, no? the good haters always watch out on uh, what uh, acts of commission or omission that they make, which constitute errors that uh, run against the progress of the movement, of the revolutionary movement. Um, this is such a thing as self-criticism, you see? Uh, it's not true, eh? like, you know, those British, uh, what, like those British analysts, Analytical philosophers say, oh, uh, these monarchies always use big terms and conceal uh, the facts and so on and so forth. Crazy. Uh, the generalities of, uh, of uh, even they say that there is infallibility, uh, there is a claim to infallibility by the Communist Party and by the No, there's, not such, there's no such thing. Um, the Communist Party and scales are scientific. Uh, uh, they recognize that uh, correct actions can be taken, correct policies and actions, and wrong ones can be taken. Huh? And um, that's why there is criticism and self-criticism, and a whole, uh, and, and whole sustained rectification movement, because errors are committed and they have to be corrected. The scientific attitude, no? Um, in among communists goes back to practically to, to Francis Bacon. You know? There is trial and error uh, in, you know, uh, in, in uh, arriving at the uh, uh, arriving at the fact or in the entire truth. So that's it. Um, uh, uh, those who make mistakes uh, uh, must be given a chance to stay in the party or to return to the party. And uh, if, uh, let us say, but uh, you have to weigh how serious was the, uh, uh, the error and how well-meaning uh, was the error committed and how well-meaning is the desire to stay in the party, no? Yes. Uh, because, you know, then Xiaoping promised not to take revenge on those who eh, accused him of committing mistakes. And he, uh, he said not to take revenge, but he, did, he took revenge afterwards. In, In fact, fact, he made the biggest revenge by uh, restoring capitalism. That's right, Ito. I think, uh, yeah, that's really uh, something that, uh, you know, uh, a symbol that the party is genuinely serving the people no, by allowing its members, of course, its members who commit mistakes uh, to, to actually change for themselves. Um, again, given this circumstance, Tito, um, of course, there are also youth or young revolutionaries who are facing difficulties and also committing errors. What advice can you give to them, Po? Um, you know, to advise the young revolutionaries today who are facing difficulty and committing errors against the revolution the, against against the revolution and the revolutionary uh, among other revolutionary people how can we still encourage them to rectify and remain in the movement uh, you know those who are in the leadership and those who are supposed to be on the correct side vis-a-vis um, um, uh, -vis those who make errors um, uh, they should give uh, the one committing uh, errors a chance uh, uh, to get cured. No, uh, you you don't criticize in order to you know uh, kill the patient, uh, but to cure the patient. And then when you are curing a patient, uh, uh, you don't rush him to become so well. No? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sometimes a uh, one who, who makes a mistake and still wants to stay in the party would have to have some amount of therapy you know, uh, before you know putting him on the road. Uh, you, you don't force a newly recovered patient you know, uh, to, to, to join the marathon uh, and stress himself. You know? Usually there is a period of uh, 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 therapy. You know? 
uh, in order to adjust, you know, you to regain the strength of someone who got sick uh, with something. So, and, and there must be understanding uh, for those in error who would like to stay home and uh, must be given a chance. Uh, as a matter of uh, principle, because everyone commits errors, big and small, and uh, just sometimes there are errors committed uh, uh, without malice. You know? uh, uh, when the error is committed, uh, 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 when the error is committed without malice, it's easier not to handle. No? If there is already malice, uh, well, that's already uh, uh, that's already the the error or not the or the, the willful act of a uh, of a someone opposing the revolutionary movement. But if someone desires to still to do uh, to do a, a good part, to play a good part in the revolutionary re revolutionary movement, all chances must be provided. And uh, a person in error at a given time. Can um, can fix his error um, and even do greater things than before. Huh? So uh, even even Marx can commit an error. Uh, Didn't he say before for a good reason that uh, he, he was against the, something like the Paris Commune? But when the Paris Commune occurred, no, he changed his mind. No? Because he thought that the proletariat would do better if the anti-war uh, campaign eh, took precedence, um, um, took precedence, uh, but when the Paris Commune uh, occurred and showed that the workers could take power, oh, this Marx recognized it's a good thing. No, so even the greatest uh, uh, can can have some error in estimation. Uh? So there you see an example of non in, non uh, infallibility eh? of uh, of great communists. Uh, let's proceed naman dito sa ating next question. No? Ang sabi dito, how can we encourage our comrades to conduct um, criticism and self-criticism or what we call CSC and how should we conduct this without antagonizing one another? You know, uh, uh, criticism and self-criticism uh, uh, sessions must be held regularly, periodically and upon... Uh, upon timely need. Eh? If an error is so, so serious as to disrupt work, uh, you don't have to wait uh, for a, uh, for the, uh, the scheduled uh, session. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, with this periodic and timely uh, sessions, criticism and self-criticism, uh, errors in work can be uh, solved immediately. And when the criticism, self-criticism and self and self criticisms are made when the self criticism and criti criticisms are made on the basis of facts eh? um, then uh, and in the basis of facts in the work uh, there's nobody nobody uh, uh, should resent if we, if the committee uh, uh, in a previous meeting uh, it is decided that we recruit uh, 10 more members mm -hmm. and uh, you recruit only five you have to be self-critical, eh? either because uh, there was a wrong estimate or there was a failure in effort eh? uh, to make an uh, to make the accomplishable uh, uh, task. No? No, you have to be scientific, factual yes, uh, in uh, in criticism and self-criticism, so that uh, there will be no uh, there will be no uh, it will it, criticism will not amount just to you know throwing attitudinal. Uh, uh, cuss words <laughs> uh, yes, against so. the other fellow. Uh, if that's the case, uh, throwing jargon like "oh, you are a left opportunist," you don't use the big words uh, unless you have uh, enough factual basis to uh, uh, for the big word. Uh, mm -hmm. We use big words like subjectivism, opportunism, only when there is already co a collection of errors, of grave ones, no. Mm -hmm. uh, but in criticism and self-criticism, it's like, uh, uh, you know, you can, it's like, uh, why did we not accomplish this? We thought we could accomplish it. Why? We were wrong estimate or we had, we did not exercise uh, the same, uh, uh, the needed uh, amount of effort or someone fouled up, no? Uh, fouled up the plan. 
because probably some uh, some for one reason or another uh, due to circumstances. So you know, this all these problems can be uh, can be dealt with scientifically, factually, and scientifically. I see. All right, Tito. Um, yes, let's proceed naman on our next question from an audience. Um, the question is, is the second great rectification movement ongoing or is there any rectification movement upcoming? The uh, second great rectification movement uh, was declared finished in 1998 and declared uh, successful. And then... Um, uh, of and then, you know, the achievements resulting from CSGRM were affirmed on the basis of developments. Uh, you see, uh, let's take Mindanao, no? Um, at one point in 1986, Mindanao practically had half of the strength of the entire uh, armed uh, revolutionary movement. Then because of this Kampanya uh, Ahos, uh, because of the uh, Rawa, the, this urban insurrectionism, and then the Campania House, uh, uh, at least 1,500 no? of the firearms were lost, mass base was lost. Uh, but then uh, the corrections, the rectification movement was so done, was well, was done so well that they could even capture a general in 19, uh, uh, that was the time of uh, Arab, no? 19, if I'm not mistaken, 1999, no? Uh, I used to, I used to say, the NPA, I had to, I used to mark the advance, uh, 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 the, the advance of the NPA in this way. Well, in this year, uh, in this period, uh, a general called Karingal, uh, who killed uh, Balgos, uh, was killed by the NPA. Huh? Huh? Then, uh, in 1999, after the rectification movement, uh, uh, the, uh, the NPA was able to capture gen uh, a general, General Obilio. Then, uh, the best of the development was sometime, uh, uh, sometime afterward, a general defected to the NPA, General uh, Harge. No? So I thought, uh, oh, this is a reflection of the advances of the NPA. Uh, imagine the general who led uh, Operation Thunderbolt in Negros uh, had been won over. That's a great achievement. Huh? So <laughs> anyway, um, Mindanao become, would become the strongest uh, base. Uh, the, the region, the, the, the forces there would become the strongest in the entire country. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, Mindanao benefited from uh, having cadres from the Luzon and the Visayas uh, previously. Okay? Then, um, then uh, in more recent times, uh, the Mindanao would be providing so many cadres to the rest of the country, to the Visayas and Luzon. Uh, in, in 2016, they were able to deploy uh, um, uh, excellent cadres, uh, time-tested cadres, uh, to, uh, in order to, to help raise the quality you know, of the movement in different regions in the Visayas and Luzon. Uh, well, I get this information from CPP publications. Uh, I should be, I should point that out. No, um, uh, I have no source but the uh, CPP publications. Right, Tito. Ano? Uh, let's move naman further sa ating questions, Tito, na na, um, sent by our audiences. Do you think that the leadership of Rodrigo Duterte will cause another faction inside the party? Why or why not? I don't know what are the presumptions of the question. Uh, well, uh, Duterte is so rotten that he cannot inspire any faction with, uh, to yes. arise within the Communist Party. Uh, there can only be Trotskyites and uh, uh, crypto Trotskyites from the outside saying, Oh, uh, you supported Duterte, you made him president, no? Mm. You made him, you enabled him, no? And that's the worst I have heard, no? But uh, making a faction within the Communist Party, uh, Duterte, well, the guy is so rotten and so moronic that he cannot possibly inspire anyone. 
And Boris. only idiots like uh, Nathan Kemp would say, oh, Duterte can still uh, maintain himself uh, through populist mobilization. You know, this, this uh, uh, rotten uh, uh, academic pedants, they keep on Duterte, calling Duterte a populist instead of calling him a, uh, uh, a demagogue, you know, a damned demagogue, you know, you know um, uh, you, you, they ascribe to him always popularity. And the, the uh, you know, the clever linguistic way they do it is to call him a populist. Uh, he's anti-people, through and through, and he cannot inspire any faction. Um, uh, the um, w when Duterte said, "Oh, we can get, uh, we can, we can um, engage in localized peace negotiations," when he was uh, he was lying. Uh, the uh, uh, Communist Party, the NPA, and all the revolutionary organizations were declaring themselves uh, at every level against uh, this uh, fake. Uh, uh, localized peace negotiations. That was a trick to split eh, the revolutionary movement. It, but, but it was a, uh, it was actually an intelligence, psy war intelligence and uh, uh, combat operation. The so-called so -called localized peace negotiations. Uh, first, um, they say, oh, uh, don't follow the central organs. You yourselves can negotiate, and we have plenty of money to give you, eh? and uh, we can give you a job, a house, and so on and so forth. So that's a common. And then they try to uh, approach the uh, families and friends of suspected uh, rebels, uh, suspected um, uh, members of the NPA, offering goodies. Eh? And then if any relative or friend makes the mistake, of saying, well, I'll try to contact my friend huh? or my my brother or my son, huh? and then he becomes the subject of uh, surveillance and intelligence. And then, um, um, so if you admit, and then you are uh, you are put through, you know, sham sessions of surrender. People, uh, people and communities in barangays are called to a meeting. They sign attendance list, and then this would be used as, uh, as you know, as a list of surrenderers. Eh? Uh, but no man, money is supposed to be given to surrenderers. Uh, but the money is pocketed by the military officers. So that's the way how Duterte has been conducting his counter-revolutionary work. But uh, uh, Duterte is most notorious for just killing. Eh? He does not go through the niceties of, you know, uh, intelligence and, uh, and cyber. war. Uh, the, the order is if, you, if someone looks like uh, a communist, kill him. Uh, this, the slogan is kill, kill, kill. That's Duterte. Uh, he's uh, beyond, you know, um, he's beyond the level of someone trying to uh, create divisions and creating factions within a revolutionary movement. I see. Um, thank you, Tito, for uh, answering that question. Another one naman from our audience. Sabe, there are people who are apprehensive in supporting or joining the Communist Party of the Philippines because of the mistakes committed. So how do we sway them to our side, uh, or, or onto the party side, and explain what happened during those times and how it was been corrected? Well, uh, uh, committing mistakes, small or big, is not a monopoly of the Communist Party. Even if you're not a communist, if you are, you know, you, even if you are an anti-communist, uh, or sensibly someone who is a non-communist and, uh, you know, tries to be an ordinary person without any kind of uh, 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 principles, eh? well, you are liable to make uh, mistakes. In the first place, your big mistake would not, uh, would be, you know, ignoring or even opposing the revolutionary movement. That's a worse mistake eh? than joining <laughs> the Communist Party. <laughs> If that, be, if that be a mistake at all, no? Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, when uh, there, is so, there, is, there are so much crimes being committed by the ruling class and by the chosen representative Duterte, and you don't even criticize, uh, you don't even criticize the son of a gun, uh, you are eh, committing a big mistake. Eh? Uh, so, um, there is no field of activity in which you engage 
uh, that uh, you are liable, you are, uh, that you are not liable to commit a mistake. And uh, committing mistakes is part of the process of uh, improving one's work, no? Mm -hmm. Because you can keep on uh, avoiding mistake by not doing anything. That not doing anything to uh, in response to the wrongs in society or the injustices is by itself a mistake. Uh, um, so um, uh, it should not be presumed that the CPP has a monopoly of committing achievements as or committing mistakes. Uh, the CPP is a positive revolutionary force that keeps on growing uh, by um, um, taking the leadership, the working class, mobilizing the broad masses of the people uh, in order to obtain national and social liberation for the Filipino people. And that's the case. And in the process, I have already explained, uh, because of uh, the weaknesses of a party at a given time, it is liable to make certain mistakes. Or because of certain uh, inclinations, it, it is capable. And even when it becomes strong, it also uh, is liable to commit mistakes. So uh, the CPP uh, is like anything, you know, um, uh, nobody was, ever, no liberal democratic uh, revolutionary was ever discouraged eh, by the rise of French, the French terror. Uh, the, the democratic principles in the rights of a man uh, put forward by, um, by, by the French Revolution would be uh, held sacred, uh, upheld, and uh, applied by bourgeois democratic revolutionaries. Uh, you don't say that, oh, well, um, uh, the French Revolution uh, uh, was set back by Bonapartism, by uh, uh, mo monarchic restoration, and so on and so forth, uh, in, by imperfect. Well, um, uh, you cannot say that to invalidate eh, the bourgeois democratic principles, the liberal democratic principles put forward by the French Revolution. Eh? They were the best principles available before Marxism eh, uh, was established. And you don't discourage by Marxism. Uh, you don't uh, uh, you don't discourage people from uh, becoming Marxist-Leninist because uh, the anti-communists say, "Oh, uh, that movement is uh, shut up with mistakes." You know, uh, I think the biggest mistake is capitalism uh, as it uh, continues to dominate the lives of people. So, so the, uh, you have you either have to choose between. Uh, if you were in a capitalist country, the big choice is between so socialism and capitalism, and everyone is insulted anyway. Eh? Uh, you call the society capitalist, but only a few can really call themselves capitalist. It's always better to be in a socialist society where everyone can call himself a socialist. No, and in a country like the Philippines, uh, well. Uh, uh, the struggle there is for uh, a new democratic revolution to be followed by uh, the socialist revolution. And what is b the better choice? Uh, shall you abstain from the revolution just because you fear that you will make mistakes? No. Wherever you are, you will make mistakes. If in the first place you don't take care of your own uh, good sense and your uh, actions. I see, Tito. Ano. Let's proceed naman on the next question. Uh, I think this this is being this is sent by an or an by our audience, no? Sabi niya po, ang tanong niya is why is that why is that there's no communist party participating in the elections? Uh, no organizations who are open in being communists. C can you please share your thoughts, Tito, on this? No, the Communist Party is not participating in the elections because it is prohibited in the first place from doing so. And uh, you know, if you uh, if you consider the history of the of the Philippines since uh, let us say the 1950s, early you know, or since the late 1940s, uh, the policy of the U.S. and uh, and the reactionary government uh, has been to kill communists, no, or to do everything possible to. Sh to uh, shut down 
the Communist Party if it would uh, uh, surface. So, um, and then the, uh, even when the uh, revolutionary movement led by the CPP, by, by the old Communist Party was supposed to have been defeated uh, in early in the 1950s, uh, later on in the late 50s, in the late, latter half of the 1950s, uh, the reactionaries in the Philippines, egged on by the U.S., would uh, uh, would uh, legislate the anti-subversion law. Eh? So there is a long history. And now you come to, uh, uh, you know, the after some period of uh, 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 acknowledging the existence and growth of the Communist Party and the reactionary government pretends to go into negotiations, uh, later on they would scrap the peace negotiations. And now you have the current situation uh, of Duterte repeating uh, what Marcos did, no? engaging in state terrorism and, you know, killing anyone who would come up, uh, who would present himself as a communist. How many, how, many, how many peace consultants have been killed by the Duterte regime? And they were tortured, uh, killed in a, the most gory uh, manner. So uh, it's understandable why the, why the Communist Party w would not be so crazy as the PKI, eh? making itself available for the slaughterhouse eh? of the U.S. imperialism and the reactionaries. So, um, um, as a matter of fact, uh, even non-communists now are being uh, 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 accused, red tagged as communists, and they are being killed, no? Because uh, Duterte thinks it is a uh, it is a useful weapon for putting down his critics, uh, uh, the, the opposition, and the human rights defenders. Uh, so uh, it's understandable why the Communist Party cannot present its neck eh, to be wrung eh, by uh, uh, its enemies. Ayan, thank you, Tito, for that. Uh, I think we are now down sa ating uh, last two questions, unfortunately, to our audiences. We are now closing our floors sa ating uh, Q&As. No? Thank you so much for sending in your questions and thank you so much for sharing and participating on this discussion with us. Uh, um, Alright, Tito, let's proceed. Again, this is a question from Evelyn Kalugay. Is it possible to have a strong ideological um, is it possible to have a strong ideological building but, ex but expansion remains weak? And what is the error? How and how it can be? How can it be identified? The correctness of ideological building can only be proven not only by counting those who have undergone the study courses, but uh, more so by the result in terms of arousing, organizing, and mobilizing the people. Political mobilization uh, should reflect. Yeah, how really the building is uh, is strong. And further on, you don't just mobilize uh, lots of people, but you make sure that they are organized, okay? Mm -hmm. You have a party and, and mass organizations and organs of political power organized, no? So uh, even, you know, uh, the monks, even the monks who kept themselves in monasteries and self-indulgently studied the Bible, and uh, um, uh, try to make direct direct communications with God. Eh? They even cast, some of them castrated themselves to be able to concentrate on their uh, spiritual uh, spiritual work. They had to uh, to make Christianity <laughs> uh, expand. Eh? They had yes, to well. do catechetical work eh? uh, among the. Uh, and uh, and they had to make the parishes uh, work eh, in order to gather more people under the, under the flag of Christianity. I'm talking about the feudal times, no? And then and then of course um, you have all sorts of Christian organizations, no? So it's not possible just to strengthen yourself ideological in in uh, in, in ideologic through ideological building. You have to prove. How good is your ideological building by uh, by true political mobilization and organize, organizing the most important organizations, uh, including you know the organs of political power uh, that is supposed to supplant that are supposed to be to supplant the reactionary state. So um, 
Only dogmatists and sectarians can think that the world will change by simply, you know, um, ideological building. Mm -hmm. uh, not even the religious would think that uh, um, uh, uh, that uh, they would become stronger by simply reading the or uh, by simply studying the Bible uh, or praying to God. No, mm -hmm. uh, they had to do political work uh, and organizational work. So. Um, I don't think it's a good idea simply to, uh, uh, you can only evaluate ideological building as more important, eh? um, but then it is not the solely important thing to do. Uh, you, it has to be interrelated with uh, uh, political and organizational building. I see. Alright, thank you Tito for answering that. We are now down sa ating huling question mula sa audience. This is from Ramon Chito. Drop down sa ating comment section. Tito, ang huli niyang tanong is, what can you say about coalition government? Is that possible po ba? Well, before a communist party wins political power, um, especially in the case of the Philippines and in the case of so many other countries, um, the communist party has to do uh, united front work. It's a basic thing to do. Uh, and, and because, you know, uh, if you just rely on the capabilities of the CPP, uh, then uh, you will be depriving your, yourselves of the uh, uh, reaching, reaching in the quickest way possible millions of people through the United Front. United Front is a uh, weapon of the revolutionary movement for facilitating, accelerating, and in multiplying the number of people that can, uh, that are, uh, uh, that can be, re but that should reach, the, that can be reached by your message. Mm -hmm. huh? So, um, now, when the Communist Party, which has the People's Army under its command, seizes political power, it can, uh, depending on the circumstances, uh, if there are powerful allies that must, that must be taken into account, uh, you use the principle of coalition government. Uh, take, for example, China. Um, the Communist Party with its People's Army won the revolution in 1949, but there were democratic parties. So there were consultative uh, before and after the victory in 1949. The, the, the communists were, uh, were used to having consultative uh, uh, assemblies uh, uh, with uh, other democratic parties. Eh? In the case of, uh, even in the case of uh, the Soviet Union, you, you see, um, there were uh, alliances. In the February Revolution, there would be an alliance between the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks, and the and the uh, and the bourgeoisie, the, the other bourgeois, uh, bourgeois parties combined uh, would be able to seize the initiative. But come came October, uh, the um, uh, the Bolsheviks had uh, uh, had important alliances with the socialist revolutionaries which had more Soviets among the peasants and the Bolsheviks. But then uh, the socialist revolutionaries even tried to kill Lenin. Eh? So the alliance would end. Eh? Uh, so uh, even in the Soviet Union, you know, the usual anti-communist criticism of the Bolsheviks is that they, uh, they were unwilling to have alliances. They were, uh, uh, they were obsessed with one party rule. No? But the, the allies, some of the allies, uh, uh, turned against the Bolsheviks in a violent way. And so they had to be, uh, uh, they had to be treated accordingly. So, yes. But of course, uh, the, the experience in China in, in, the, in, the, in the building of the United Front before, during, and after the armed revolution uh, would be the Communist Party having alliances with democratic parties. Mm -hmm. I see. All right. Uh, Tito, I think that's all of it. Uh, yan na po ang lahat ng ating questions that is sent by our, that, 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 is sent, that was sent by uh, our audiences. Again, thank you so much for participating and sending in your questions. Before we end, 
ano, and finally close the situation, uh, the discussion, ano. We would just like to plug in, no? Anak Bayan, uh, Serve the People shirt is now available for pre-order. So, if you are interested in having one, no? If you are in Europe and you're interested in having one, uh, please... Uh, send in your details. It is pinned on our Facebook page, Anak Bayan Europa. So, to send in your pre-orders now, ano, na po, um, you know, uh, so you could have that Serve the People shirt that you could wear. Ano. Ayan. Again, uh, Tito, thank you, thank you so much. Natapos na naman po ang ating uh, isang discussion, no? a very special episode on the Philippines Continuing Revolution, the Second Great Rectification Movement. Again, this live will be available on our Facebook page at Nakbayan Europa. So don't worry if you've missed something out. Most especially, we have cut out on the middle part and we are we are again sorry for the technical error. Um, ayun, uh, Please, abangan nyo po ulit kami next Sunday. We are going to discuss another special topic. So, stay tuned. Watch out for the announcement sa aming Facebook page, sa ating Facebook group, sa ating Twitter, IG. Um, lahat ng ating platforms, magiging available lang information na yan. Thank you so much. So, please don't forget to invite kasamas and comrades and everyone to participate and learn sa ating webinar dito sa National Democratic Line Online School. Before we finally close, uh, Tito, do you have any... Do you have any uh, messages to our audience? Tito Jo? Well, thank you again. Um, uh, I have enjoyed this uh, uh, webinar and uh, I, I wish that uh, uh, our listeners uh, were able to gain uh, uh, more information and more uh, understanding uh, of the principles involved uh, in the rectification movement in, and in all other endeavors of the uh, Communist Party of the Philippines and the revolutionary movement. I see. Ayon, again, thank you so much, Tito Jo, for uh, giving us this very, very wonderful and special lessons about the Second Great Rectification Movement and sa ating lahat na participate uh, uh, muli. Uh, Diyan na po ang nagtatapos ang ating episode ng ND Line Online. Ako po si Kasamang Christ, kasama si Tito Jo, mapagpalayang hapon sa ating lahat.